All right, have and have not fans. Um, I guess you can call this video kind of like a um, what's the like an overflow or a spill off or I don't know the correct term I want to use here, but this video is inspired from an alarming amount of comments <laughs> on my oval and sister videos that I did this week. Now I know a lot of you were like, "Yo, where's that over review?" There's a lot of stuff that went down. And if you don't know, I also sell stuff on eBay. It's been a pretty hectic week. And, um, you know, praise God, a lot of stuff sold. A lot of extra money came in because I needed it. And um, I was busy getting that stuff ready. Plus, Ambitions had two episodes instead of one. So I felt like, okay, since they had the two-night event, let me go ahead and do all those videos first. And then, you know, well, three episode reviews. And then the trailer breakdown for the, for the finale. Then the very next day. You'll notice I posted like six videos at once. Um, sister review, a video about Andy and Gary, then my overview, and then three additional discussion videos. So I did more videos about the Oval in one week at once than I usually have done. And I've noticed the standout video so far has been the one about do you feel sorry for Gail? Because some of Picky's thugs have, you know, grabbed her, taken her behind a wall, and they're probably going to attempt to assault her. Now, Something that came up because I think I brought it up in the um, in my commentary for the overview about how there is an annoyingly it's unavoidable at this point. We know that Tyler Perry has a way of repeated dialogue. Characters is like, "What you say? Say it again. Tell me what they said. I know you're not going to do Th this." happened because I watched the oval and um, I remember seeing another YouTuber talking about the episode and I looked at the comments and I noticed on their video a bunch of people were saying the same thing I tried into I tried to get into these shows but it's so boring because I uh, it's just the same dialogue over and over again and I could not agree more in my commentary for the oval episode I own the sparrow I noticed this happened at the beginning when picky is you know going off because you know um Barry isn't Barry nor Gail is telling Picky what's going on but I'll let that one slide because that actually makes sense in the context of Picky had no idea what the connection between Gail and his cousin Barry was so with neither one of them telling the full story about what's going on and him and Gail just messing around in bed he had every right to just go what yo what are y'all going to tell me what's going on that made sense but getting to the least interesting story arc of the show so far between Lily, Donald, then Kyle, and Bobby. Every time Lily and Donald are on screen, it's the same thing every episode. When are you going to tell me what happened? To who? You know who? Donald, I just shot a man. What? Where is he? Do you know who he is? Where'd you take him? Am I supposed to just walk around like nothing ever happened? every freaking episode and then kyle is like the justin the haves and have nots character justin he's like the justin of the oval where he's just an asshole and then he gets goes to donald's i want you i want you it was like kyle i told you to get away you remember how i said at the beginning richard really gave off a david harrington vibe it almost feels like donald has that persona now like look i told you to go away i, I put you on a another um Security team, I don't want to see you around no more. Just get away from my house, uh, Kyle. And then Kyle and Bobby is just like, you don't know what's going on between those two. And, okay, let me stop. I'm turning this happened and have not been into an oval video. And I've already done those videos. But here's my point. A lot of people are making the same comments about the same dialogue. And a couple people commented on one of my oval videos. And they actually said, I'm worried about season seven. I am too for multiple reasons. Number one, let me just put it this way. Let me just put it out. Oh, sorry. Hit the box under my desk. Let me just put it this way. Am I excited that the show's coming back? Hell yeah. Because, well, that's the title of this channel. It's the main show I review. Am I interested to see what's going to happen next? Uh, season six overall was pretty strong. Some things I loved. Some things I liked. Some things I absolutely hated. But one of my biggest concerns is you go from saying this is the deadliest season 
to just saying they're not going anywhere. And I've already done two videos on this. Like I did one about the deadliest season months ago. And then I literally just finished recording one about they're not going anywhere. So if you want my full thoughts on that, you need to check out that video. But I feel like the fact that the show has been gone for six months. Greenleaf season four overall was pretty dang strong. And trust me, I know I reviewed it for the first time and the numbers on my video speak volume. Speaking of which, if you were unaware, Greenleaf was put on net season four was added to Greenleaf's uh, Netflix roster. I believe the Thursday before last saw so just about a week and a half, two weeks. And I've noticed a huge increase in my Greenleaf videos because people who weren't watching the show live have been binging it on Netflix and then they find my videos because the AJ videos have been just so many comments on a daily basis. So you've already heard me say multiple times in other videos that, wow, it's crazy to think that December 2018, I was literally just doing the haves and the have nots. Aside from the haves and the have nots, I had talked about the pains, but then I quit watching that because the show was so terrible. Um, the only if loving you is wrong videos I had done was like why well, I love Alex and I did like half a dozen when the show is going to return videos, but that was it. And uh, now look at me, the haves and the have nots. But I, I added if loving you is wrong to my roster, Greenleaf to the roster. I reviewed season one of Ambitions, and then of course now I added the Oval and Sisters. So that's about a half a dozen, if not more, shows that I'm reviewing now. So I feel like when the season seven of the haves and have nots comes back. Will I be more critical? Very much so, because I've seen other shows and how they're done, and we've waited six months for... I, isn't that, I never thought of it this way. It's kind of ironic. We waited six months for the show to return after its sixth season had wrapped up. Look at that. But if you think some of my scores for like the Oval and Sisters is low, for the haves and the have-nots, I am the gloves are off, because this is season seven. This isn't their first season. This isn't their third season. This is season seven. So for certain things that have been bugging me and other fans about the show, no more. This is season seven. They did reshoots of season seven before they did the shooting of season eight, meaning that repetitive dialogue, dragged on scenes, characters taking up far too much screen time, and the biggest pet peeve for me, and it, believe it or not, I don't give a damn how many characters die. I don't care who has sex with who, unless it's in bad taste, you know, because sometimes two characters have a love scene when they don't even need to have it. And I'm not just talking about, oh, you're just talking about Justin and Jeffrey. No, 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 no. Any character that has a sex scene that really doesn't relate to the flow of the story is dumb to me. But I feel like if there's no character progression, I'm talking about if Wyatt, Jim, Catherine, were if a number, and I don't mean to just say the criers, I mean, a lot of these main characters, and Benny, a lot of these main characters who have been the same for seasons slash years now, you can make the argument, well, Jeremy, when you really think about it, if you look at the past two, maybe two and a half years, I have and have not, technically speaking, only maybe a couple of weeks have passed by. I'll give you that. <laughs> it's like, Jeremy, I understand you love character development and character growth, but People need time to change, and in our world, it's been years, but to them, it's only been a matter of weeks, so it's gradual. But you have to look at some of these characters that have done life-defining crimes or survived life-threatening scenarios, so you would think they'll be a little less reckless in how they live, but for most people, no, it stays the same. Um, I would love to know what year it is within the timeline of the show. I don't know. There, there are just a lot of things I would like to know, but... I think this show needs to be grounded as well in terms of some things that make no damn sense actually make sense. Uh, to me, it, it's no secret that Catherine and Jim are still alive. And if you didn't know that, I would say, oops, but are you really surprised that they aren't dead? I really hope they take the time to explain how they survived getting shot the way they did. I think Catherine is the biggest, like, okay, point blank and then head first into the water. You better explain how she survived that and quickly. So I think when it comes down to it, 
Season 7 already has some strikes against it by some fans. Some people have said they lost interest. Guys, it's just like when If Loving You Is Wrong was gone for over a year. A lot of people were saying, I'm quitting the show. The show been gone too damn long. But when it came back, the show did pretty dang well. And how do I know? Once again, my videos, they, they blew up. That lets me know right there that y'all still love the show regardless. And you're going to tune in. I can understand um, being mad, especially Greenleaf was a great substitution for the haves and the have-nots. I'm not just saying that in terms of how well my videos do on the channel, but in terms of the show and the story, I really liked it. But also remember, like I said before, I've been reviewing more shows and looking at shows like shows by different directors, shows by um, uh, shows like Ambitions and Greenleaf, who, which have nothing to do with Tyler Perry. In those shows, there are some things that are done better than the haves and the have nots. And I now see why some people kept telling me, yo, you need to do Greenleaf. Is I think this season is better than the haves and the have nots. I believe it. And as quiet as it's kept and as much as the show has slept on, I think, and I'm going to do a full review on ambitions after season one ends uh, this upcoming Tuesday. I got to think about it. So I need to really meditate on it, you know, instead of just blabbing my mouth. But in some ways, ambition season one may have eclipsed the haves and the have not season one. And season one is arguably the best season of the haves and the have not. Season one and two, well, you know, from the first episode of Big Surprise to the ending check make when Amanda got shot, which I still think is season two, but whatever. Some things are done well, some things are not, but I think in terms like Greenleaf and Ambitions, I think in terms of the episodes, there's not a lot of wasted moments. When it comes to the haves and the have nots, the Tyler Perry writing shines through, not in the best way, when characters just, their dialogue sounds like they're written by children in terms of them just repeating the same thing back and forth to each other long dramatic pauses it almost feels like i'm watching an episode of dragon ball z where characters just stare at each other and just stare each other down and it's like okay um when are we moving to the next thing but i don't know like i'm feeling this kind of way now and i can understand other people feeling the same way but tyler perry this is season seven and, and here's the worst part about it we've seen in the past and look don't let me just put it this way. I am not saying anything negative towards Tyler Perry in regards to the work ethic and all he's accomplished. No. And I've said it before. I'm glad that starting October 1st, when he got the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame to the Tyler Perry Studios gala and everything, more people are now understanding the man, not the dress and wig. They're understanding more about Tyler Perry, what he's done, what he's continuing to do, where it came from. More people are learning that that's becoming more to the forefront as opposed to just Medea. But in terms of us diehard Tyler Perry fans who have been with him through the haves and have nots, House of Pain, back to his plays and the movies, you know, before he really blew up. It's not unfair to say that when we notice Tyler Perry putting out more and more material, his material that's been on for a while begins to suffer. Whether it be because of drawn out storylines dialogue that is super repetitive characters that don't grow and i will say that i'm a bit hopeful because since they did season seven reshoots that lets me know that they did make some changes so it is possible that season seven might be even better than it was originally filmed to be so i'm not going to rule it out just yet but when january 7th comes and they air that first episode i believe it's called are you happy at 9 p.m I will be fair to say it is a season premiere, so it's not going to answer every flipping question that we had from the episode Show Not Tell, but it had better be a very strong opening because we've waited six months. Well, excuse me, by the time the episode airs, we would have waited six months. The show, they claim they're going to keep things under wraps, so I'm very curious and a con bit concerned as to whether or not we're even going to get a full minute trailer for when the show returns next year. I hope this season knocks it out of the ballpark because like I said, the gloves are off. I might be even harsher in my reviews than I used to be because we've waited too long for this to not be good. But based off what the cast members have been saying, which they look like they had a blast filming it, the promo shoot, everybody looked great. But I'm just not going to I'm not going to be here for Jeffrey's 
wishy-washy attitude. Um, let me just talk about some positive things. I hope that... No, 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 I'll do a separate video on that. But, yeah, let me know, fans, are you concerned about haves and have-nots Season 7? Or are you thinking, Jeremy, I, I get what some of you're saying, or some of what you're saying, but I'm just going to be happy the show is back. And that's completely understandable. A lot of people told me, you know what, man, I ain't, I ain't even watched OWN since the haves and have-nots has been gone, or I only watched OWN when Greenleaf came back, and then I tuned back out because I don't watch Queen Sugar or David Makes Man or uh, Ambitions or whatever. So... I feel like the show has a lot riding on it and trust and believe wouldn't it be something if the haves and the have nots comes back for season seven and it's like way better than the old and sisters put together. That would be something. Maybe that'll make more people get their own network. Hmm, we'll have to wait and see. But all that being said, if you feel like Jeremy, I can't believe you said all this. Keep in mind that most of what I said in this video, as I mentioned at the beginning, is in reference to numerous comments I've seen on either my videos or social media posts or other YouTubers who review these shows and I saw what their comments are. So yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But guys, I just want the show to come back. I pray we get a trailer this week about it um, during the finale of Ambitions. And uh, you know the drill, links to my social media are in the description below. We are less than 690 subscribers away from 100,000. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so we can finally hit it. And I can finally do these giveaways because I want to get that plaque. It'll be like an early Christmas present from YouTube. So let me know what some of your concerns are for this upcoming season of the haves and the have nots. Is it because is it like, well, I hope Benny actually gets it. He better get a job this season instead of doing something stupid. Or I hope Hannah takes the money or Candace keeps it or I hope Veronica gets what's coming to her. Uh, Jeffrey leaves Justin alone and David protects himself from his crazy ex-wife. Uh, and, and the list goes on. So maybe I'll do a video of my top five hopes for season seven. And with that being said, I will talk to you all in the next video.